And then if you use Logos Bible software, then I recommend this as well. Uh, you, can buy all, you can buy them one by one. You can buy them four together. And uh, because it is over $100, it's $110 there, uh, they can even give you a payment plan on it. You can pay you know, 20 bucks a month, $20.71 a month. And then you'll have it in your Logos Bible software. And that, you know, I, I talk about Logos quite a bit. And that, to me, uh, you get your theology window, you got your Bible there in, in parallel columns, and, and you just go at it. And it saves you so much page flipping, and you, you click on a verse, and your Bible goes right there. And uh, that's, that's my normal mode of study. So uh, the full volume on uh, Geisler is uh, 109.95. Now, Schaefer, if you do not have a set of Schaefer uh, and you, you, you know, want to want a copy there as well, we have copies available. We, we actually purchased multiple sets years ago. And we have, I think, three full sets in the church library. Uh, I have two sets in my home library. Uh, plus, I have Schaefer in Logos. So... I'm very uh, e ready to loan out my Schaefer sets any time uh, because you know they're very loanable given that I have them in Logos. So uh, we're not going to do uh, th th we're going to use Geisler for our main assigned reading from week to week to week. But there will come some weeks later on, not so much in prolegomena or bibliology, but when we get to soteriology, when we get to salvation, when we get to ecclesiology, I believe there will be some weeks where I will assign some parallel reading. Uh, where we will give the main reading in Geisler, and then I will also assign additional supplementary reading in Schaefer, so that you can see two different approaches. Uh, it's going to be helpful, uh, two different approaches to try to explain election or predestination or, or things of that nature. Okay? It will also help you to spot some of the distinctions between uh, Schaefer and Geisler, and that will be a good thing. That will be a very good thing. All right, any questions on that related to the textbooks we're using? I'll get to the handout here in a moment. Related to where to obtain them, how to find them. Okay. Do you anticipate that it's going to be insurmountable to uh, obtain this before Sunday in this coming week? Do we need two weeks? Do we need a second week? Because I can do a second introductory lesson next week and then assign the reading for the following week. We, we got some flexibility because we're launching a four-year program and, you know, I don't want to wait till January to launch it, but we can we can delay a week or two. You have a thought on that? I don't know if it's available PDF. You, you can Google that and hunt for that and find a... a and like I say, I can also loan you my copy because I have a set... And I, I can gladly own you, loan you my copy. Okay. Or I can loan Chris my copy. We have extra copies. We can, uh, we can make that possible. Okay. All right. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about your handout. Let's talk about your handout. Uh, the front of this is the side that has the title, Schaefer and Geisler Reading Schedule. It's a bit mislabeled. Um, but in two columns, you've got Schaefer on the left, Geisler on the right, and you've got a summary of what they're about. And they're worth looking at. Uh, Schaefer had a prolegomena and, uh, of 17 pages. Geisler has a prolegomena of 212 pages. <laughs> All right? And to me, that's a wonderful advantage. It's a wonderful advantage. And a, and a large part of why... I enjoy Geisler's systematic theology so much, and we'll, t we'll discuss this as far as what the topics are of the prolegomena. The, uh, the benefits are is that Geisler's background includes tremendous ministry in apologetics. Uh, the, the book, uh, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, for example, is, is wonderful. And it's great apologetic work. It's why Dan got saved, or part of the, the tools is, is, that led to his salvation. And, and uh, other... other uh, works related to apologetic ministries. And much of that comes into the prolegomena. Why are we theistic? Why do we believe there is a God? See? And, and fundamentally, that should lie underneath bibliology. You know, if we say God wrote the Bible, well, why do we think there's a God? You know, who wrote this book that we think God wrote? All right? And so it, this really does approach the subject on an apologetic basis to start with. And then once it's clear that God's existence is, is reasonable, then uh, we move on to the revelation that, that he has disclosed concerning himself, that is, his word, 
And uh, the subject of bibliology then is the next main development. So anyway, in Schaefer, this was all in volume one, was Prolegomena, Bibliology, and Theology Proper. Uh, theology proper being God himself uh, in his person apart from his works and uh, not and, and would then be supplemented in volumes uh, five and six by particular studies on Christology and pneumatology. In uh, Geisler, uh, this subject matter shows up in volume two, uh, the study on God and the study on creation. Okay, uh, You'll notice creation is not actually an element of Schaeffer's systematic theology in any respect. Uh, so volume two of Geisler is God and creation, and then appendixes, 83 pages of appendixes, in which he does uh, develop the particular uh, applications as it pertains to Christology and pneumatology. And you'll see that as you start working your way through the, the different tables of contents. Um, Schaefer in his volume two is angelology, anthropology, homardiology. And uh, in Geisler, we have your uh, um, anthropology really shows up in, uh, well, the, the creation will include both man and the angels. And then sin and salvation will include your homardiology and your soteriology. Okay? In any event, you can read this for yourself. Take it home. Take a look at it. Uh, you'll notice that it's, it's structured in largely similar but still somewhat different formats. Okay? And uh, you'll also notice that uh, ultimately Schaefer has 2,296 pages to read. Geisler has 2,518 pages to read. Uh, so slightly more pages uh, by going with Geisler rather than Schaefer. I think that's offset by the fact that they're more readable pages. And uh, it's not the language of the 1930s and 1940s uh, that uh, Schaefer was very fond of. Uh, and it's not, and um, also I think uh, just the, the readability is much better. The graphics, the layout, the, the, uh, they're, not, they're not intensive pages. They're not crammed with microprinting, as it were. All right, so as far as that goes. 2518 is the, is the page count. Divided out among 80 classes or 79 classes, uh, you're going to average about 30, about 30 pages per week of, of reading. And it's not... Exorbitant. Particularly, don't be worried about it, especially for those that also have language coursework that they're a part of, or they have other studies for uh, maybe Sunday night teaching, or they have other uh, grace notes courses that have been assigned, things of that nature. Um, this, uh, this will be our most intensive class, but it's not the only class that many, many of our students are taking, and, and we are uh, well aware of that. Okay, now, on the... Front side still, you'll notice, just looking at Geisler, um, volume 1, 2, 3, and 4 there, we're going we're gonna to have 20 classes per volume, a total of 80 classes, as I said, uh, to do systematic theology. That's half of the 160 PMWs over the next four years, okay, uh, with breaks in between, and, uh, and so forth. you see how volume 1 is broken down. We have the intro class. We're going to have seven classes in prolegomena. Uh, plus, I'm going to include the appendixes as class number eight in Prolegomena. Uh, there are two appendixes in volume one. It's only 25 pages to read them. Um, and, and they're more suited to the Prolegomena than they are to the Bibliology. So we're going to make that class number eight of Prolegomena will be the appendixes. And then we'll have 11 classes in, uh, in Bibliology. And uh, that will wrap up the 20 total. As it comes to uh, as it comes to volume one. Now, now you may turn the page over to the back side. And what do you see on the back side? You see the detail of those twenty weeks. Okay, and specifically you have page numbers. Uh, if by the way they're, they're going to be different if you do go with a single volume edition, the page numbers will be off, but the chapters will still be consistent. And uh, I went ahead and portioned this out in the reading that. We read entire chapters. We never uh, divide up a chapter. So um, even if the page numbers don't line up, the chapters will still be consistent. So as you look at this, week number one is introduction. Week number two is chapters one and two. Now, what do I mean by that? When it says week number two is chapters one and two, what does that mean? Yes, and that means you have read it prior to next week. That means you have read it this week. That means you arrive at 7.30, Christmas,
prepared to discuss, debate, um, prepared to uh, answer questions, prepared to interact with the material. Uh, don't try to cram read it on Sunday afternoon. We let you out at 12.30 and you say, okay, I've got, I've got seven hours now to read these two chapters. You probably could do that. Um, but I recommend you do that as a refresher reading, not as your first reading. All right. Uh, I recommend that you read a little bit each day. It works out best if you read a little bit each day. And if you've got two chapters to work with, then uh, maybe you know read chapter one on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Read chapter two on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then use that Sunday afternoon time as a review and, and just do the refreshing reading of chapters one and two on that Sunday afternoon. That may work out for you as a, as a pretty good basis. Again, we're only averaging about 30 pages per week, so it's not like it's a tremendous amount of reading. I say that as one who reads hundreds of pages every week anyway, regardless of <laughs> things like this that come up. So f- slapping an extra 30 pages on top of what I normally read on a habitual basis is, is not extraordinary. You, however, in your life may have a different, uh, a different skill set. And uh, or a different passion, and maybe you don't read 800 pages a week as a rule, and so this is going to be uh, this is going to be different for you. I'm going to encourage you in that to keep to uh, to develop this as a habit. So uh, as you take a look at it, uh, week one is not too bad. Uh, in fact, week uh, or week two rather is not so bad. Week two, week four, week five, you'll notice are all 28 pages. There are some shorter ones. When we get to week 7 and week 8, we give you a little bit of a break. 24 pages, 22 pages, 25 pages for week 9. Um, and and those, those are good because week 6 is a heavy week. Week 6 is a 44-page week. Okay, And that's the second heaviest week you've got in this entire module. Uh, week 15 in Bibliology is your heaviest. That's a 50-page week. All right, So just know it ahead of time and know it and prepare for it. And, and to be um, also more encouraging... Some of these weeks are going to follow a week off, right? They're going to follow a potluck Sunday. Because remember, we have a potluck Sunday once a month. And so you may have a two-week gap in between, in, in between these. Okay? So however that works out, uh, it may be that you'll have 14 physical days or literal days rather than seven days to... Uh, to do your reading for the upcoming week. Is that encouraging? Some students in the past actually found it um, contributing towards their natural inherent procrastination tendencies. And they said, hey, week off means week off. And then they take two weeks off and go, oh my, I forgot I had a week off and I took them both. (laughs) Okay, so uh, be encouraged that when we have a potluck schedule, then you've got an extra week to do your week's worth of readings and... uh, it's a good chance. I think it's a, a, a possible remedial week if, in fact, you've drifted. And uh, the potluck Sunday once a month gives you a remedial week to go ahead and, and get brought back up to speed uh, where the rest of the class is uh, here in, uh, in this class. All right. Let's look at the table of contents then. Any questions so far on what? Uh yes, sir. And let's go ahead and run a microphone over, Christopher. Thank you. The call for questions is my tactical way to pause and drink my coffee. If I understand this correctly, uh, during the course of these instructions, we'll be able to basically interrupt you with a question? Um, Yes, yeah. Um, all of our PMWs are that way. Uh, you know, raise your hand and be polite about it. But, uh, yeah, in our PMW format, we, uh, we do take questions. And, and I, may, I may take them immediately or I may ask you to hold on for a few minutes uh, if I'm running the verge of a particularly brilliant point. I want to keep that going. Uh, but uh, sometimes, yeah, we take questions immediately or we, we hold off for a few minutes or we take them at the end of class. But uh, the PMW is definitely an interactive format for, for question and, and back and forth. Mm-hmm. Good question. You guys arrived in town at an amazing time because, like I say, we took almost seven years to wrap up our first four-year cycle, and uh, now we're we're this is our first reboot right back to the beginning. So systematic theology, church history, hermeneutics, uh, doctrine 100, 200, 300, 400. Uh, this is a this is a fresh reboot. That's good. <laughs> 